What's up guys? I'm Raynad. I have another update video for you today and we're going to be talking about interactivity in the bazaar. Two of the biggest concerns you guys had after the last update video was the lack of interactivity and the lack of social play. A lot of you guys felt like, oh, this might be more of a PvE game than a PvP game. And we kind of want to address both points, but just right off the bat, 100% uh, hear you on the social element. We completely agree. We want you to be able to play this game with your friends. We think that social play is incredibly important, and we're definitely looking into multiple game modes or changing the core game mode uh, in a way to, to support social play uh, more than we already are. So, you know, just because it wasn't in the demo build we showed uh, doesn't mean it's not going to be in there. We 100% want you guys to be able to play the game with your friends. It's very important to us. So with that out of the way, I want to get into the interactivity part of it. In all of the earlier versions of the game, the bazaar was highly interactive. All of your cards would directly affect your opponent's cards, their cards would affect your cards, and even though it was a drafting game where you were building up a sandcastle, uh, most of what the cards actually did was kick over the other guy's sandcastle. The more we played with these different systems and various different game modes, we kind of realized that this interactivity was kind of hurting the most fun part of the game, which was picking, you know, what contextually is the best card for my build? How do I build the coolest sandcastle? How do I make my build as strong as possible in a vacuum and you know, take advantage of these cool interactions? If your opponent destroys one of your cards and it was critical to your strategy, it's just a really disappointing feeling because now the, the drafting part of the game became entirely focused around what your opponent was doing. It became entirely focused about kicking over your opponent's sack castle just as much as building up your own. And that's not really where we wanted the focus of the game to be. We think that, that strategy games are more fun when you focus on constructive synergy and not destructive interaction. Magic was the first really big strategy card game. And when that game came out, it had a ton of interaction. There's kill spells and counter spells and discard spells. And all of those cards stop your opponent from executing their game plan. The interaction in Magic is really strong. There are ways to stop the opponent from ever even getting to play their cards, because you can take them straight out of their hand. And games like that let you have a lot of control over what your opponent gets to do. After Magic, Hearthstone came out, and that game had a little bit less interaction. There were still ways to kill your opponent's minions and things, but you could only do it on your turn. There was no way to stop the things that they were doing before they came into play. And for the most part, they try not to interact with the opponent's hand. So cards that are in your hand are safe, and then after they're in play, that's when your opponent gets to kill them. So there's a little bit of a safe zone. So Hearthstone is still interactive, but less interactive than Magic is. A lot of the most popular strategy games right now are auto-battling games like TFT and Battlegrounds, and those games are even less interactive than Hearthstone is. There's very few ways to disruptively stop your opponent from doing their thing. Auto-battler games aren't completely non-interactive though, because there's still a shared unit pool where if some people are picking a type of unit, you want to pick a different type. And sometimes you can pick specific things that will counter somebody. So there's little bits of interaction sometimes. A big part of why auto-battling games have less interaction than Hearthstone is that you have eight opponents. It's hard to react specifically to what one person's doing if you only fight them every 10 minutes. It makes it so you're much more concerned with what you're doing and how good it is against a general opponent rather than one specific guy, because there's a bunch of different guys in the room who you're going to have to beat. I've played a ton of Hearthstone Battlegrounds, and I always felt like pretty optimal play patterns would involve completely ignoring what everybody else is doing for like 90% of the game. And only when it got really late in the game, when there was like one or two people alive, did it feel like there was really interactive things that you could do to increase your win rate. Once we realized that all these games have different levels of interactivity, we started talking about what are the benefits of more and less interaction, uh, what are the pros and cons, and we really wanted to understand what our game should be. When you have a lot of interaction in your game, it does have some benefits. One of them is the diversity of gameplay. When you play against AI opponents, they're usually pretty predictable um, because they're not super sophisticated. Uh, humans are really unpredictable. When you play against human opponents, you never really know what they're going to do. They might make terrible plays or unintuitive plays. 
uh, you'll just come into contact with a lot of different situations that wouldn't be there if there was no humans in the room. Interaction really pushes this feeling of like competition and socialness in games. You feel like I'm gonna beat up on that guy. There's another person sitting across from me. And some people are like sadistic. They wanna troll people and, and just ruin their day. And so interaction is a really good way to push that feeling like you're playing with another person. One of the biggest drawbacks of interaction, especially disruptive interaction, where you like break all their stuff or ruin their game plan, is that it's really zero sum. Uh, when one person's having more fun because they're ruining that guy's day, you know, the other player is really not having fun. They don't get to do what they wanted to do. So in a zero-sum fun situation, it means that for one person to have fun, the other person doesn't have fun, uh, which is a lot of like counterspell stuff. And it'd be like this person getting plus five fun, they had a little bit more fun, but this person who had his stuff all ruined, he, he feels minus five. So the fun is net neutral for the room, even though this guy's having a great time and this guy's having a terrible time. A lot of the interaction in Magic is of the kind where it's zero sum. One person has fun and the other person is not having fun. Uh, counter spells are a great example. One person goes to play something, the other person just says, no, you don't get to play it. And you know, people playing counter spells, they love that. They love playing counter spells. But pretty much everybody hates having their thing countered. It feels like you don't get to play the game. Uh, a game that's not zero-sum fun would be when one person can have fun, like a plus five, but the other person doesn't care, you know, they're at a zero. So there's more fun in the world. The total score for this side is a plus five, and for the zero-sum side, you know, it's, it's a zero. In most of the examples that we can think of in Magic and in Hearthstone and pretty much every game, uh, the interaction was shockingly close to zero-sum. It was fun for one person, but the other person had less fun. And we really didn't like that trait for a lot of interaction. Another huge downside to destructive interaction is that players just wanna make their own strategy. You know, the game's all about making something cool, finding cool stuff and putting it together, seeing how it works. People wanna build this sandcastle. And it just, it sucks when you don't get to do what you came to do. You, you assembled this cool combo and they just like, took out one piece in the middle of it and now it just doesn't work and then you don't get to do anything. Like, that feeling sucks. One big downside of really heavy interaction in games is that you have to wait for the opponent to make all their choices before you can do yours. And so there's a lot of turn waiting, like it's my turn and your turn and half the game is just waiting and staring at the opponent. Even auto battling games have a lot of waiting because you'll finish everything you need to do and then you have a 30 second timer where you can't do anything, and you don't even watch what other people are doing. You just sit there staring at the board, and that's lame. It's not fun to wait. People want to play their game fast and uh, just never stop with the action. The Bazaar used to be a really interactive game, and it came from two main areas. The first was destructive interaction. You'd break all their stuff, ruin their strategy in their day, and then the other area was that it was a 1v1 game. You just keep fighting the same person over and over until one of you was gone. I've seen certain trends that kind of point in this direction. Right? When you look at a game like Magic, what is the most popular format in Magic? What is the most popular way to play the game? Well, it's EDH, it's Commander. And what's unique about that format compared to all of the other ones? I mean, Commander might be more popular than every other game mode in Magic combined. And it is the only mode where destructive interaction is frowned upon. If you play Yokel Hops in your friend group, uh, you're going to get kicked out of the playgroup. It's all about everyone building this cool strategy that's unique to them that they identify with and then getting to play it out. That's the fun part of the game is doing cool stuff. It's not about making the other person lose or interrupting each other. There's a reason that EDH and Commander as a game mode has been blowing up. And there's a number of reasons for this, right? It's not just solely this interactive component or lack of interactive component. The decks still interact with each other, but you have to admit it's way less interactive in a game of EDH where everyone's doing their own cool thing compared to like a 1v1 standard game where it's all about interrupting the other guy and locking them out. Over time, we got this impression that a lot of our interaction was making the game less fun than it could be. Like the destructive interaction. It was kicking over someone's sandcastle. It felt really toxic. People just wanted to make their cool strategy and see it come together. Uh, the game didn't have to be about ruining the other person's thing. 
It could just be, I build my thing, you build your thing, and then we see who did it better, you know, whose thing is cooler. Um, and we think that's just a lot more healthy of a play pattern. When it came to destructive interaction, you know, breaking up your opponent's strategy, we thought we could just get most of the benefits from interaction in general without that kind. We, we could get a lot of diversity of gameplay, the unpredictability of humans, without letting them destroy your stuff. And we thought we could also get that feeling of like, it's a PvP game, I'm beating somebody else, this is social. We thought we could get that feeling without letting them destroy your stuff. If you just, you know, are comparing who has the cooler build. We still wanted you to fight against other players because when you fight other players, their builds are really creative and diverse. We didn't want to have a PvE game. So though we didn't like destructive interaction, we still wanted it to be a PvP game. We didn't want to make it against computer players because real people make really creative stuff. It'll just make it more fun to explore what everybody else is doing. So we started removing a lot of our destructive interaction. It used to be baked into the, the core game rules. You would use your weapons and they would attack your opponent's items. You directly break up their strategy. And so we shifted the game to be more about hitting the player you hit their health bar, and all their items are pretty safe. You're not gonna permanently destroy their items. So after we removed the destructiveness in the core rules of the game, we put it on specific cards, because we thought we don't want it to be on every card, but we'll still have some cards that will just break up your opponent's stuff. Some of the game will do that. But after we did that and we played with it, we always felt like the most toxic cards, the ones that were like the least fun, were all the ones that were disruptive. They were the ones that were saying, you know, stop your opponent from doing their thing. And so one by one, we were kind of drawing back even further. We were pulling away from all the destructive interaction. So today, there's very little destructive stuff left in the game. Uh, most of the cards just interact with your opponent in a blanket way. They slow them down a little bit, but they never stop your opponent from doing their thing. There's still some perma-stunning and perma-freezing, which you probably saw in videos because Andre always abuses stuff like that. All right, Medusa, good game. <laughs> uh, we're trying to get rid of it. We're trying to make that not happen in the game so that you pretty much always get to do what you came to do, even if it's not good enough a lot of the time. After those changes, the game was still being played against one specific opponent. You just keep fighting the same person until one of you died. So it was a 1v1 game. And that was another way that the game was really interactive because you'd have to build in response to what your opponent was building. That might sound like a good thing because it would make every game play differently, but it felt kind of weird when there's limited interaction because if one person got a lead, it was really hard to come back. Imagine if an auto battling game had only two players and then one of them just got ahead. They just keep winning over and over. We had a lot of games that ended in like a 5-0 victory or a 0-5 victory because one person won the whole time. And also, when you don't have a lot of ways to directly break your opponent's stuff, it makes it so you don't have as much freedom in what you can build. Because if this build is bad against that build, I just can't make it because I'm going to keep fighting that same guy over and over. If he's playing really aggressive, I can't just do the slowest thing because I'm going to only fight that guy. We were having a lot of separate conversations at that time about all the other strategy games and the pacing of them. You know, how quickly did players have to play or how much weighing did they have to do? And Andre came up with a matchmaking system that would solve all of our pacing problems. In the matchmaking system we're using today, we're pairing players mid-game against a random other player who's also playing the bazaar. It could be anybody. And when you do it like that, nobody's ever waiting on each other. I never have to worry about an opponent waiting on me, so I could like leave in the middle of my game, or I can take 45 minutes on a decision, or I could do it in two seconds. And then as soon as I'm ready to fight, I get an opponent. So we removed the turn timers with this new matchmaking system. So Magic and Hearthstone have the traditional 1v1 matchmaking where there's two players and then they get paired at the start of the game. And then these players just fight each other until the game is over. And that's all there is to the matchmaking. In the auto battling games like TFT and Battlegrounds, they introduce an eight person lobby and they're all in one game together. And then in the middle of the game, they get paired against each other. So they get random opponent among everybody in the group and they fight each other. Maybe they lose a little bit of health and then all these matchmaking pairings go away and they're on their own again. They'll do some buying, making their strategy better. And then they get another random opponent and they fight random people in the group again. They just keep doing this over and over. You keep fighting a random person. 
Everybody you play against is always in this group of eight players. You'll never fight somebody not in this group. So you are in a game together, but there's eight of you. The bizarre matchmaking system, it takes it one step further, where here's you playing on your own, and then when you need to fight, we pair you with one random person. But it can be anybody in the entire game. It can be anybody who's playing the game who's roughly as strong as you. And then you get paired off by yourself. You make your own improvements, you do your own gameplay, and you just keep getting new random opponents. So you can play against anybody. It's not gonna be the same set of people each time. We're really excited about this matchmaking system and we implemented it so you fight random people each time. And for most people, it feels like the game got a lot better. You're not building in response to what the other person is doing. You're mostly just trying to figure out something cool to do on your own. Just because we're doing this matchmaking system for like our main game mode, doesn't mean that we want the game to be antisocial. We can do other game modes and a lot of the comments were saying that you guys want ways to play with your friends. And we completely agree. I want ways to play with Andre. And so we want to make some other game mode for the bazaar where you queue directly with your friend or you queue with a group of friends and you can all play together. If we made a social game mode like this, it would have to have a few differences from our main game mode. So first, players would have to wait for each other sometimes. If you're playing with a friend and one of you is ready to fight, it doesn't mean the other person is. And in the normal matchmaking, we just find someone who is ready. But if you can only fight your friend, you'll have to wait for them. And then another downside um, and difference for this game mode is that you'll have to fight people with a different record sometimes. If you're 3-0 and you're crushing it, you might fight your friend again who's 0-3. But you know, that's, that's what you signed up for. You're playing with your friend. I feel like it's not a big drawback. We definitely want to put a social game mode into the game despite those problems. We're really grateful that so many of you are commenting, making content around the game, disagreeing with us. Uh, we just think all of this community involvement is just going to make the product so much better. So yeah, thank you so much for everyone that supported it, everyone that's backed the game on Indiegogo or on Republic. Uh, you know, we just uh, love that we're building this together with you guys rather than uh, doing it all behind closed doors and then throwing it out into the world. We just think it's it's helping us shape the game in the right way the entire way through. So this is a super interesting topic to us. So if you guys think we're just completely off base here, if you agree, disagree, whatever your thoughts are, leave them in the comments. We'd love to read more. And uh, we'll see you guys back another Friday for another update video of The Bazaar.